So we're already seeing shed loads of leaks and rumors around the new Pixel 4, Google's upcoming flagship phone set to launch at the end of 2019 and packing, of course, a fresh bit of Android Q OS. But of course, the Pixel 3 and the Pixel 3 XL have only been out for just over four months now, so they're not exactly old hat. Although that said, Google has already run a few discounts on this pair. As I was writing this review, the Pixel 3 XL was reduced from its rather steep £869 to a slightly more palatable 744 quid. And you can definitely expect more reductions in the coming months as well, long before the Pixel 4 handsets even emerge. So I thought now would be a great time to return to the Pixel 3 XL, slap my SIM in it, and see if it's grown on me any more over time, especially as lots of other fantastic flagship Androids have emerged in the meantime. So here's my full Pixel 3 XL 2019 re-review and don't forget for more on the latest and greatest mobile tech to pop subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers! So I've been rocking the white model of Pixel 3 XL which I definitely prefer out of the three hues on offer, the other two being a rather budgety looking black effort and a non-committal very weak Ribena pink. I honestly think that Google has missed a bit of a trick by not launching a more vivid version of the Pixel 3 handsets. I mean after all that blue model of the original Pixel was simply stunning and highly desirable. Hopefully we'll get a return to those more vibrant colours with the Pixel 4. All the same, this nice ice mobile looks the biz, standing out thanks to its unique two-tone backing and little deals as well such as that highlighted power button. The Pixel 3 XL has proven surprisingly sturdy over time too. That back is completely scuff-free, while the Gorilla Glass 5 screen is only tarnished with a few little light scratches here and there. After four months plus of being chucked around in my backpack, that's pretty impressive, especially when you compare this with the iPhone XR, which has received the same treatment for a similar length of time. Of course, the Pixel 3 XL is a bit of a big bugger at 6.3 inches, especially with that chunky bezel sat down beneath. You don't get a dedicated one-handed mode to help out either, for that you'll have to install a third-party solution, but you do get a bit of help from Android Pie's gestures. For instance, swiping your finger down that fingerprint sensor can shunt down the notification bar, so you're not having to stretch all the way up that enormous screen. Just remember to turn that feature off before you play PUBG or other games to avoid a nasty shock in the middle of a gunfight. Also, I always forget when I return to the Pixel 3 XL just how crazy big that notch up top is. I mean, seriously, I do a double take when I boot this thing. In fact, calling it a notch is probably really offensive to notches. This is more of a pit or a canyon. Of course, the reason for this inflamed intrusion is the dual lens selfie camera, a similar setup to the Galaxy S10 Plus, except the Samsung managed a slightly tidier punch hole finish instead. Neither solution is perfect, of course, but for some reason the S10 Plus doesn't make me balk quite so much. Other opinions are, of course, available. But focusing on that display itself, I absolutely have zero complaints. The 18.5 by 9 OLED screen is simply stunning, producing vivid in-your-face visuals. The Quad HD Plus resolution keeps images super crisp as well. Stick the Pixel 3 XL side by side with any existing smartphones, the new Galaxy S10s included, and Google's blower easily holds its own. Of course, you get full support for HDR video, so your Netflix session will be an absolute beaut. And you can play around with the color output and the display settings if you prefer some more natural looking images. It's also refreshing to have a phone with proper front firing stereo speakers as well, something that's becoming increasingly rare and one up shot of that bulky notch and bezel. The Pixel 3 XL definitely does the job when you want to watch a bit of video or whatever in a noisy environment such as a kitchen, but we definitely say hook up to some phones or a Bluetooth speaker or something if you want to enjoy some proper music. So on to one of the other big reasons for owning a Pixel 3 XL, the stock version of Android Pie. If you're not a fan of those dense overlays that most of the manufacturers slap on top, then the Pixel will grease your gears nicely. Of course, you can get a vanilla Android Pie experience on much, much cheaper handsets as well, such as Motorola's Moto G7 family and HMD's latest Nokia branded handsets. But that said, the Pixel 3 XL and the Pixel 3 do offer a few bonus bits on top. For instance, there's the Active Edge pressure sensor, which detects when you're silently throttling the Pixel in a fit of rage and can load up the Google Assistant in a frantic attempt to calm you back down again. Then there's the useful ambient display and the digital wellbeing feature, which is basically just a virtual nanny telling you to stop f***ing about on Reddit and go speak to a real life human with a face and everything. Generally once a week or so, I'm finding a new feature that I didn't know about, like how you can pin live footy scores to your desktop or check a full history of any music that the Pixel has picked up on in your vicinity. Although as usual, you can forget about any non-mainstream tracks actually being recognized. And yeah, it is Google being kind of creepy as usual. But of course, the massive kick to the cock for us Brits is the fact that the Pixel 3 XL's best feature is still missing in action. 
I am of course talking about Google's call screening feature, something which would help to prevent PPI dickheads up and down the nation from ruining our lunch breaks every single day. There's still no sign of that coming to the UK, so sucks to be us I guess. Oh and there's no facial recognition up front either, which is not particularly great when you're working in the kitchen, you've got messy hands and you end up having to use your knuckles to try and enter your pin. Anyway, on to performance, and providing the grunt here is Qualcomm's Snapdragon 845 chipset. It's well over a year old now, and been superseded by the new Snapdragon 855, as well as several rival platforms from the likes of Huawei, Samsung and Apple, but it is far from antiquated. And while most Android flagship phones are going off for their billy big bollocks, ooh look at me, I've got 10 gigs of RAM, the Pixel 3 XL sticks with a much more sedate 4 gigs instead. So sure, the Pixel 3 XL doesn't benchmark as highly as the Galaxy S10s or even cheaper phones like the OnePlus 6T or the Honor View 20, but in everyday life it is brilliant, as smooth and as swift as you would like. And it's not too bad for a blast on PUBG Mobile either. You can play on those top detail settings and everything looks all sharp and pretty, although you will see some pretty big stammers when you're driving about in a vehicle at times. So dedicated gamers might want to go for something like the Huawei Mate 20 Pro with its dedicated GPU turbo support instead. And battery life is solid on the Pixel 3 XL as well, thanks to the 3430mAh cells stuffed inside. It'll easily keep you going all day long and well into a second day as well if you're restrained on how often you whip it out of your pants. Unfortunately, that 18 watts fast charging doesn't seem particularly fast anymore compared with the likes of OnePlus's Warp Charge and Oppo's Super Vook Tech. However, you can also wirelessly charge the Pixel 3 XL, and I actually really like the way it combines with the Pixel stand. Slap it on there and you can turn the phone into a digital photo display, a sunrise alarm clock, and the Pixel can also automatically stick itself into Do Not Disturb mode. It's all fully customizable and it works with charm. Go check out my full in-depth Pixel stand review for all you need to know. Now in a world of dual and triple lens smartphone cameras, the Pixel 3 XL walks its own path with a single lens 12.2 megapixel shooter. All the same, despite its lack of telephoto and ultra wide angle options, I love taking shots and shooting video with the Pixel. That auto mode doesn't try and impress with any AI branded gumph, it just takes great looking shots no matter what the conditions. Images look brilliantly natural, which means that those vibrant hues really shine. Plus you can shoot raw pics if you want to properly play with them afterwards, beyond simply cropping and shoving them up on Facebook. Of course, since launch Google has added the new night mode, which mimics Huawei's own night mode, serving up a long exposure photo to capture more detail in those low light conditions. Activating the night mode definitely results in brighter, more colourful, more detailed shots, although you do get some overexposure in those brighter elements when shooting the likes of a cityscape. The results are definitely brighter and bolder than what you would get with the Huawei Mate 20 Pro, although the Mate 20 Pro is definitely superior when it comes to the exposure of those lighter elements. As for the dual lens selfie snapper around front, this grabs great looking shots of your mugs, including of course portrait shots with a bokeh style effect to blur out the background. And you can easily fit in all of your best chums as well thanks to the wide angle mode, or just a whole lot of extra nothing in my case. I'm so lonely. Now for a closer look at the Pixel 3 XL's camera tech, check back really soon for an in-depth camera comparison between this and some of the latest and greatest Android flagships including Huawei's cheeky new P30. So a few months on, do I love the Pixel 3 XL more than I used to? Well I definitely still enjoy using it as my full time phone, but it definitely doesn't excel in any areas besides that camera tech and the punchy display. The performance has been surpassed by several handsets, many of them much cheaper than this phone, while the lack of call screen it means that the stock Android experience on the likes of Motorola's Moto G7 is almost as compelling. So basically the Pixel 3 XL is kind of like going into a nice Italian gelatos and asking for a scoop of vanilla. It's good, you'll like it, but if you're willing to take the plunge there are better options available. So what do you reckon? Maybe you think the Pixel 3 XL is the best thing since sliced bread, whatever the f that means, and that I'm just a massive wang who doesn't know what I'm talking about. If so, I'm pretty sure you've already bashed your comment down below long before now. Otherwise, what do you reckon is better than the Pixel 3 XL and why? Again, let us know your thoughts down below and don't forget to poke subscribe and ding that notifications bell for more on the latest and greatest mobile tech. Cheers everyone, love you!